All right, so we're gonna call the meeting to order at 7.06. Uh, before I do that, let me go ahead and, and give co-hosts uh, capabilities. Give me a quick second here. I think everybody is should be called whoever it is. All right, so we're gonna call the meeting to order at 7.06. So we'll start with the opening remarks. I just wanna say thank you for joining the MPUY family. You all are our community leaders that believe in building better neighborhoods and building a better quality of life. So we appreciate you being an active and valued member of our community. Before we get started, as usual, I'm gonna go ahead and mention some housekeeping guidelines. Please stay muted to prevent background noise. If you wish to speak, use the raised hand feature located in the reactions tab in the bottom right hand corner. Also, if you're calling in, then you can use star six to mute and unmute and star nine to use the raised hand feature. Correct me if I'm wrong, Gloria. Oh, you're absolutely correct. Uh, correct. Uh, and once you raise your hand, you will be called to the floor in the order presented. This helps with the flow of the meeting and Robert's rules of order that requires only one person can be on the floor at one time. If you speak without being called to the floor, then you may be at risk of being muted or blame it to my head and not my heart. Also, if you are speaking and you are a speaker, uh, try to limit your speaking to two minutes. We have a, a large agenda today as best we can. I'm also may start a timer in the bottom right hand corner so, so that you can see the time. If you are a city representative, please enter your contact information in the chat. We're gonna be calling the first responders first. So APD and fire, we're gonna call them first so that they can quickly serve the community after our conversation. Also, uh, I wanna give a couple of shout outs. So I just wanna give a shout out to the committee chairs. They started off running smoothly. Uh, they are doing a great job as many of them is their first year as committee chairs. Also wanna give a shout out to uh, High Point Estates who reached out to the, to the various businesses around the community to make sure they get everything cleaned up, as well as uh, providing a, well, it's in the future, you will see that we'll have a letter of support for prior role in, in University Avenue. Uh, also just wanna give a shout out to all the community leaders that attended the elementary school meeting. We'll give an update about that later on in our meeting, but I appreciate all the community members that has been attending the community meetings and giving valuable input. So we appreciate that. We'll start with the approval of the minutes. I'd like to solicit a, actually we're gonna do a consent, unanimous consent on the approval of minutes. Gloria the Hawkins approval of the, you Gloria said what? Hawkins. So moved. Um, so okay. moved by Gloria Hawkins, can I get a second? Nicole Weiswasser. Seconded by Nicole Weiswasser. And the minutes are located in the IPUY website. You can get to it by just scrolling down and hitting review, January meeting notes. All those, well, we're gonna do a unanimous consent, meaning that if you object, then we will make the note there. If I don't see any objections, we're gonna assume that is unanimous. So we'll pause for a second to do, uh, to see if there's any objections to the minutes for January. Point of order, Mr. Chair, it's probably better so folks aren't confused that the uh, approval will be done by voice vote and upon not hearing any that were, in, and then later asking if there are any objections. Okay, we could do that. So all those who are in favor, just say aye. 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 
Mr. Chair, right. all, also, all those who are wish to object, please re, um, please make a note right now. So if you see any objections, please uh, mention it now. Mr. Chair, point of order, also worth uh, reminding those of eligibility to vote. Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, those who are have attended three out of the last 12 calendar months are eligible to vote. If you are a resident or a business constituent that has attended three meetings, this being your third meeting out of the last rolling 12 calendar months. All those who wish to object, please speak so at this point. All right. Uh, the agenda or the minutes has been approved by unanimous consent. We're going to move forward to the approval of the agenda with one modification. So essentially the modification is instead of Tuesday, today is Monday for the agenda. All those who have, who have wished to approve through the agenda, please say aye at this moment. Aye. Uh, aye. A point of order, there has to be a motion to approve oh. the agenda. All right, uh, can I solicit a motion? Motion to approve the agenda, Heather. Motion, Nicole. Uh, motion by Heather, seconded by uh, Mr. Nicole. By Nicole. Second by, by Nicole. Nicole. Uh, those who wish to approve the agenda, say aye at this moment. Aye. 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 All right. Those who wish to have a objection to the agenda, please speak so at this moment with the amendment other than the Monday. Motion carries by unanimous consent. So we're gonna move forward to the reports for the city department representatives. We're going to start with the police department. I think I saw Major Richter in the line. Okay. I'm here. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. So overall, overall, we had 49 part one crimes this past month, which is, is up from, uh, from the previous month. I'll just go through them and, and highlight on a couple of things. So there was one homicide that was over at 201 Maori Avenue in the village of Zakarver. There were six aggravated assaults. Uh, three of those involved firearms. Uh, there was one person that was arrested out of those six. Uh, there was one robbery. There were 14 burglaries. Uh, half of those were vacant properties that were under uh, construction. Uh, four people were arrested out of those 14. And the most frequent item that is stolen during burglaries or, or during these has been uh, copper wiring and air conditioning units. Uh, going on, we've had seven auto thefts this, uh, this past month. There were two arrests and five out of the seven vehicles have been recovered. Uh, one person uh, left their vehicle running when it was stolen. And then lastly, uh, Larcenies, uh, both uh, non-vehicle, there were 12, uh, with building supplies being the most common thing stolen. And then larcenies from vehicle, there were eight. And out of those eight, five of those cars were un left unlocked. And in three cases, they left firearms inside, which obviously we, we do not like to see that. And that's, uh, that's a report for last month. If you have any questions, I can uh, answer for anybody. Uh, yes, if there's any questions for the benefit of the body, please use the raise hand feature at this time. Or if not, would you have pull up that one document for uh, Major Richter? He may be able to better explain what APD is asking of us. It is the, um, it is the uh, integrated cameras. And I'd like to put it in front of Major Richter. He may be able to better explain to us what is being asked. Sure. How are you doing, Major Richter? I'm doing good, except for the rain tonight, right? Well, at least it's not snow. <laughs> there uh, it's, it's, in, it's on the screen. Okay. Okay. So there's actually 
two parts of this. So there's a resi residential part where we're basically asking people to register their cameras. And in the case of an event happening near your house, then we reach out and basically see if you've got any video footage that you'd like to share with us. The secondary part in that is the businesses. So, you know, a lot of the, the gas stations and uh, uh, locations like that have multiple cameras outside. We're hoping that those people are willing to integrate those cameras into our uh, video integration center so we could actually look at locations real time. So the benefit of that for our officers is they can actually log in and see what is going to be in front of them before they arrive. Um, very important to kind of cut out the issues on who did what, if they can actually see it live as they're driving to that location. Um, it makes it a lot uh, quicker and, and safer for our officers to know what's taking place. Um, and that's like, so that's for the businesses. Um, we have had an issue for the past several years where we were, we were unable to integrate cameras that were not identical to ours. Um, there's a company called Fusis that we were, uh, we were able to kind of uh, fix that part. So they can integrate any type of camera that you have, unlike before when it had to just be on our Genetech system. Thank you. Speaking of cameras, if uh, I should, need your group to speaking of cameras, uh, there was a question of whether the cameras were operable, the, the cam cameras that have been installed, um, the police uh, surveillance cameras, whether they are operable in the Southeast Quadrant. I'm aware of no cameras that are down at the moment. So we did a good job of trying to uh, repair a lot of those. Um, there were some issues around Jonesboro Road and the Lakewood area um, that I was aware of that were down for a good amount of time. Those are back up working. And what we've been doing is taking the cameras in our old platform and then moving them into the FUSIS platform um, these past uh, several months. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Major uh, Ricker for everything that you do for our community. Thank you. All right, moving forward, we're going to move forward to the fire department. Is anybody from the fire department online? Yes, uh, Chad Thomas, uh, Battalion Chief uh, for First Battalion. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, it's been a busy month for Atlanta Fire. Uh, just from the 9th, 13th to the 19th, Atlanta Fire Rescue has responded to 2,382 calls for service. And within those calls, we have had a really an uptick um, in structure fires. So just want to send out a reminder that um, stop by your local fire station. If you don't have smoke detectors or it's time to change them out, let us know. We can either come out to you or you can stop by the station and we can provide those for you. All right. right now, um, the city of Atlanta, along with AFRD, we're doing participating in the employee giving campaign and which all employees are able to give to organizations such as the Georgia Byrne Foundation, Gold Shield, uh, Big Brother, Big Sister, Habitat for Humanity, such as that, um, such of that nature. And so we are participating in that. But outside of that, are there any questions for me? Are there any questions for the benefit of the body? Please use the raise hand feature at this time. Also, I provided my information in the chat if anyone needs to email me. No question? Yeah. All right. Well, all right, appreciate it. All right, uh, everybody have a safe day. All right, you too now. Okay. Uh, saw Captain Adams on the line. Appreciate Captain Adams. Did you have anything to add before we move forward? All right, seeing none, we're going to go ahead and move forward to the Department of Watershed Management, Yolanda. 
बॉक्स में इस डिपार्टमेंट वाटर शेयर मैनेजमेंट ऑन लाइन All right, we're going to go ahead and move forward to Officer Cofield with the code enforcement. Hi, good evening, everyone. I hope everybody's been safe out there. I wanted to tell you a bit of information. We're still here at code enforcement. We are working very hard for you all. We have lots of cases, lots of cases that are going to court, lots of cases that are being served citations, notices. We just have lots and lots of cases. Um, we have um, small numbers of officers now, but we're actually hiring. So if you know somebody who would like to apply, please apply at the City of Atlanta website. One more other thing I wanted to mention about junk vehicles. We actually do handle junk vehicles, but we handle them behind the sidewalk. So if you're trying to report a junk vehicle, and you want to report it to 311 and it's coming to us, code enforcement is behind the sidewalk. Anything in the street, you will need to call APD, the Atlanta Police Department, and they can take care of cars that are in the street. But code enforcement, we handle behind the sidewalk. That's all for me. Um, my number and name is in the chat. If you would like to speak with me or ask me any questions or email me, you can do so at any time. And I repasted her information to the bottom of the chat just in case uh, anybody need it. Uh, is there any questions for the benefit of the body for Department of Watershed? I mean, uh, for code enforcement? Oh, the enforcement. Yes, sir, for that. <laughs> Okay. We I'll, do have I'll one in the chat. That one. I see it. You see it. Uh, uh, George, your call to the floor. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to find out about it. I put in um, for bumps, for the speed bumps. About six, seven months ago, I've gone in. I've said nobody's contacted me like three times, and nothing has been done on my block about it, but they're steady flying. Can I call you later and we talk? <laughs> you can call me at any time, but I think you may I'll, need to report to 311 because I think okay. that that sounds like a transportation issue and it's in, in the street. We do behind the sidewalk. And see, but yet they got it when you go online to do code enforcement, you put it in there. I'm not understanding the code enforcement. It, it's five different code enforcements, like I said before. So oh, okay. one is housing, you oh, have Lord. fire. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, which one are you? You're not the street um, though. Uh, I'm housing. Okay, I didn't know there was, I thought everybody was it's on. Five, the... It's five okay. different ones. Okay, but I'm gonna connect with you so you can connect me out so I can get off. Oh. Yes, sir, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> you are a sweetheart, thank you. All right. Bye y'all. Uh, appreciate, appreciate it, George. Uh, Shantae? Hey, Ms. Cofield, I didn't see your information in the chat. Can you repost it, please? Yes, ma'am, I sure can. Okay, thank you. And you have such a beautiful smile. Thank you for being well, a piece of joy much. on the call. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> okay, I think I got George. <laughs> and and Shante, I think you've got both of them. I don't see any others. <laughs> and there's, yeah, there's one more in the a, in a chat from uh, Denise Fisher. Let's see if I can put it in there again. Uh, All right. the only We're gonna have is how updates on hearings. How do we, how is the public, what is the access for the public to get hearings on the in-rim properties and the properties as they go to, I guess that final hearing as to disposition? You said in-rim properties? Well, my understanding is at some point, yeah, at some point it's either clean and close and or demolition, but that's a, a hearing, that's a set hearing. How do, does the community get notice of those set hearings? So every, and she did actually send that out 
last week. I can get you the information and I can put it, give it to the president for the uh, next meeting, but we do get a copy of the NREM hearings and everything that the court is going in. We, now we can't, we don't get a, they don't, I don't think they put up a cake, um, the clinic cut. I don't think they put up a, cause it's so many numbers. So I don't, I don't think that will be, that will happen, but the NREM, I can definitely get you a copy of maybe a list of the uh cleaning cup but it's so many so it'll be a long list but i i will get that and i can actually put it in the give it to the um the president or give us access to the link oh okay yep. sounds good gotcha i will write that down and get you access to the link thank you yeah thank you officer cofield for everything that you do all right, you're welcome. And I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you. All right, you too. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna, thank you. Uh, we're going to move forward to Officer Francis from the SWEET team. Good evening, everyone. This is Pete Francis, CPW SWEET. Um, I know that we're, we're looking forward to spring and a lot of residents that are trying to clean up their property. They're um, probably cutting trees and all of those. I just wanna remind residents that if you hire a contractor to cut your tree, then that contractor must take away the trees. Um, we have come across quite a number of residents and or developer who are setting out those um, um, tree trunks and leaves at the curbside, the city will not pick them up. Also, if you are setting out your tree trunks, um, for example, a tree fell in, in, in your yard and you cut it up yourself and you're setting it out, ensure that it is no um, longer than four feet or two feet in diameter. You have to ensure at all times that your debris is set out properly. Um, that's basically all for me for tonight. Um, if there's any question, I try my best to answer. If not, my number and email is in the chat. Is there any questions, uh, Nicole? Um, if you do have tree debris that needs to be picked up, do you have to um, do a special call for that to be removed? Um, yes, as long as your tree debris um is outside what is required for your normal um yard trimming then you got to schedule bulk and you schedule your bulk before you're setting it out at the curb thank you is there any other questions for the benefit of the body all right thank you officer p francis for everything you do uh, thank you. You're most welcome. All right, moving on, moving on. I see 311 on the line. Uh, calling Timothy Cannon to the floor. Good afternoon. Well, good evening. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Good afternoon. My name is Timothy Cannon, and I'm a support services coordinator for ATL 311, which is the non-emergency call center for the city of Atlanta. And it's the number you would dial to report things like potholes, water main breaks, questions about your water bill, code violations, and other general information. Our call center, which is completely virtual, is open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. through 7 p.m. And you can reach us by dialing 311 inside the city limits of Atlanta, or you can dial the full number, which is 404-546-0311. I put out other information inside of the chat and does anyone have any questions or concerns does anyone have any questions please use the raise hand feature at this time all right thank you uh timothy cannon for everything that you do with 311 thank you sir have a good night okay all right you too uh calling parts and rec gerard jackson to the floor Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone is having a wonderful evening. I know it's a little rainy out there, but hope everyone's still having a wonderful evening. So 
couple updates I want to go over. We have removed the graffiti that was located around South Bend Park and South Bend Rec Center. It was some white paint that somebody painted the facility in the artwork. We have had that removed. I also want to let everybody know that summer camp employment positions are available online. That's for camp, that's like camp counselors, camp directors for our camp best friend program. If you have anybody over the age of 18 that's interested in summer positions, please log in to our alanaga.gov website, how do I, and employment. I also want to let everybody know that we are having a summer camp this year at South Bend Park and Ferguson Park. South Bend will be an arts camp. We'll focus on arts. And Ferguson will be a sports camp, which focuses on sports programming. I also want to let everybody know that the City of Atlanta Recreation Department will be having track this year. So currently at various locations, we will be having track. Please check the rec center in your neighborhood to see if that particular location will be having a track program this year. I want to also let everybody know that our next performance for the children participating in our after school program is on March 17th. It will be virtual and in person. As soon as I get an address um, set in stone, I will let everybody know so we can support the children and their endeavors. At this time, I can answer any questions pertaining to recreation and parks. Uh, is there any questions for the benefit of the body? Please use the raise hand feature at this time. All right, appreciate it. Gerard Jackson for everything that you're doing for Parks and Recreation. A wonderful evening. All right, you too. Uh, calling, I mean, I'm gonna repaste this information in the chat. Calling uh, Assistant Solicitor Burns to the floor. Good evening, MPU. Um, this is attorney um, Burns from the city solicitor's office. My announcements are very short in general tonight that we're open um, at the city of Atlanta um, municipal court. And we are having lots of cases um, like code enforcement reported. We've been very busy um, with the code enforcement citations as well as cases. Um, my information is in the chat. So if anyone has any questions, I'll take them at this time or you can give me a call or email. If there are any questions, please use the raise hand feature at this time. Uh, Gloria? Yes, sir, quick quick question. Good evening, Solicitor Burns. Um, uh, we heard earlier from Ms. Cofield that from citation issuance or serve, serve upon service is like six months out. Is, is that true? Is, is that the time frame from service of the citation to um, it being disposed of in court? That, that's accurate. And um, for most, honestly, for most jurisdictions, that's really good um, because of, in some of the other jurisdictions, their backlog is up to two years. So we're trying to move the cases as quickly as possible. We have had some um, technical issues um, at the courthouse that have delayed things a little bit, but we are quickly um, catching up. So um, for some cases, it is about six months, but for the most part, we are trying to close that gap. Thank you. No problem. Uh, is there any questions? Any more questions for the benefit of the body? All right, thank you, Attorney uh, Burns, for everything that you're doing. All right, moving forward, we're gonna move forward. And is there any other city officials that's on the line that I missed? I don't see any other that's in the chat. Use the raise hand feature at this time. All right, uh, Dr. Ross, I see you online. Did you have anything for purpose built schools? Dr. Ross, you there? 
All right, seeing none, we'll go ahead and move forward into elected officials. Is there any elected officials online? I do not see District 12 or District 1. All right, moving forward, we're gonna go straight into committee reports. We actually changed up the agenda slightly to go straight into this committee report so that everybody is uh, abreast on a, a committee. This is part of our push to increase the committees. Uh, and at the bottom of the agenda, you will see the various committees that we have in PY as well as contact information of chairpersons. So if you wish to be part of a committee, then please reach out to each one of these uh, chairpersons as soon as possible if you wanna be part of uh, any of these committees. We're going to start, actually, I'm gonna, gonna start in alphabetical order uh, with bylaws. Uh, I, I don't think uh, Russell's on the line, but we do have two recommendations in the pipeline. Uh, and we're gonna get with the committee to propose those two recommendations. One is around um, the transitioning process for officers. And then another is around right now is adding in health services because the Morehouse School of Medicine is there in great partnership with the with MPY and we wanna make sure that health services is covered by a committee but we're gonna propose those updates in the future. We haven't actually got it written down quite yet. I'm gonna move forward into the communications committee. Uh, Kelly Jean or Heather. I think Kelly Jean said she's not gonna make it. So Heather, did you wanna briefly speak towards the newsletter that we planning to do? Yeah. Um, sorry, somebody just knocked on my door, so we might get dog barking. Um, but yeah, we are working on compiling. We have an email list, so everybody in attendance should expect next month a reminder with the agenda and everything the meeting will be occurring, and then we'll be sending out a newsletter with all of the meeting minutes, any events happening in the next month within our NPU, um, and any other pertinent information. So be on the lookout. That should be sent out next month. All right, thank you. Is there any questions towards uh, communications? All right, we're gonna go towards the education committee. I just saw Monique. Hey y'all, how are you? Hey, I'm not used to getting to my part by 7.30, so okay. <laughs> I wasn't ready. <laughs> um, oh, moved, um, sorry y'all. But um, I will share in the chat the minutes. The biggest piece with education right now is we are focused on the strategic plan of Carver Cluster and making sure we understand all of the Carver Cluster uh, schools trajectory, working with principals. So we have meeting schedule with the principals of our local schools. If you would like to join any of our meetings, we'll share more information. We meet on second Mondays. Our goal um, of every month, our goal is to make sure we're supporting our local schools and understanding how we're building strong neighborhood schools in our community because right now we're experiencing a large exodus of families from our community at more so than I'm sorry from our schools and not necessarily from our community so we really truly need people on deck if you're interested please join my committee we meet second Mondays um, and I can share the link if you want me to share it in the chat I mean my email in the chat um, if you have questions about the strategic plan, that means what happens in the next five to 10 years to our schools, it could indicate whether we're going to have good schools or not. Um, and we want to make sure that we're thinking about very rigorous uh, coursework for our schools. We're thinking about partnerships. We're thinking about how to be a whole community with our schools. Um, this is a big, this is, this is the cornerstone work of building a CDP for your community, but also building a strategic plan for your school. So it kind of goes in tandem with what is the trajectory of our walkways and, and belt lines and all that. It also is very connected to what happens to our schools over the next five to 10 years. And, and may, you may not know, but we will, um, at 2030, 
the contract with Purposeville Schools will phase out or are supposed to, and we would be back in the care of our traditional Atlanta public schools with our schools over here. And so we want to make sure that they are in a very good position to transition. Sorry, y'all, I got a screaming kid. But let me know if y'all have questions about how do we engage with our schools. Oh, we're also looking to host a um, support um, Parkinson Elementary and other elementary schools with a incentive um, store. I don't know if you remember Perfect Attendance, you got stuff. They have the same thing and we're trying to uh, make sure that they get, you know, incentives for kids when they do good things. So um, we will share more information once we uh, get a survey out to students about what they would like to see in the incentive store. So, and then y'all get a link to, to, to figure out how to share or donate uh, the actual incentive to the students. Um, that's it for me. Thank you. Did y'all hear me? Oh, very well. We heard you. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, cool. I Thank you. Uh, is there any questions for the education committee? The next education committee is March 14th at 6 p.m. All right, we're gonna move forward for, to uh, parts and recs, which the Joyland, uh, Dr. Rebecca Robinson, did you wanna to speak towards that? Um, sure, yes, I went out and looked at the proposed um, space for the community garden and it looked great. All of the neighbors seem really committed to making it work and partnering with the city and Parks and Rec to improve the park and make the um, an area for, for people to grow food. So I'm really excited about the initiative. They do have, I think, the consent of Parks and Rec to, to use the space for, for growing food. Um, so yeah, I, I offer my, my full support to Ken and his, uh, his uh, cohort that's working on the park. And Ken, we're gonna to get to you in a in a second. We you are on the agenda as in new business. So we're gonna put you for a vote. So we're gonna give you opportunity to speak. Um, the only other it, thing I have is um, in South Bend Park, we're gonna have another uh, volunteer event on the 6th of March from uh, from 1.30 to four. So hopefully the weather will be okay and Please come out and join us. We're, we're doing a lot of exciting work in the park. Awesome. That's all I got. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna move forward into public safety. Yes, sir. Um, we've already had a glimpse of one of the items and that was with Major Richter. If you can bring that back up briefly, he, he kind of went through it, but I just want folks to understand that uh, officers are down in the city of Atlanta a third and they're using and feel their best bet for uh, containing crime is the community. What is being asked here is twofold. It's, there's an ask that uh, the community folks who feel so inclined register with the police, register with APD, uh, letting APD know that if the issue should rise, they can confer with them and, they'll, and the homeowner will decide whether to release any of their video or footage. It's just APD would like to know who to be able to immediately contact. And oftentimes in issues of criminal activity, crime is of the essence, whether or not a red uh, uh, Camaro with blue stripes went by and if they can kind of you know, figure out which direction, oftentimes cameras footage will capture. However, their request is that anybody that is so inclined to give them a call, I think the information is, is uh, can it be seen there? It's kind of, it's kind of yeah, uh, www.connectatlanta.org. In it's for forensic purposes, and again, it's access based upon the homeowner's voluntary, likely with the business, same is true with the business effort, asking any of the cameras that the business have in and around the business, that the business will give, uh, will allow APD to integrate that camera system. We heard also today that the cameras are functioning. I'm not real sure what that means because my visit to the 911 center, cameras are position in multiple places. And I've seen a proliferation of them in the Southeast with the city at large. However, there's no real individual manning those cameras uh, 911, at 911 Center all the time. There's a room full of people. Uh, those cameras act best forensically. Something has happened and they go back and do the footage. So 
I, I just say that because I think some folks are misguided and in, in believe that uh, they're capturing individuals in real time when it's really not. So thanks. Are there any questions on that one, uh, Troy, on that uh, uh, fire? We'll download it in the chat, won't you? So folks. Yeah, uh, yeah I can share it in the chat. Uh, okay. And lastly is the trifold flyer. But I will, uh, I think uh, once, once, um, once Nicole presents, I think I'll piggyback with the trifold flyer because that's part of the one of the bullets of our potential impact grant. So um, with that okay. being said, I think that's that's pretty much the presentation. All right, thank you. Is there any questions for, I think I forgot to ask, is there any questions for parks or public safety? All right, uh, moving forward. Uh, I just pasted the flyer in the chat as well. Uh, moving forward, we're gonna move forward into the transportation committee. Jeff mentioned that he was not gonna make it today, but we're working on um, a couple of things. Uh, for the Lakewood Trail, we are starting the process of having conversations with the district council people and the PATH Foundation who creates, who builds out the Lakewood Trail or the different trails in Atlanta, Lakewood Trail being one of them. And we came with two options. One option was to go from the belt line down. And another option was to go from the Lakewood Amphitheater uh, going up to Prior Road where there's a sidewalk and then you can connect to the sidewalk to the belt line. So what we decided was uh, if initially we, we got ideas from the community but then we also want to give PAL Foundation input because they all know exactly how to acquire the land, what's the lowest barrier. And we, we decided to let the PAL Foundation make a decision on what's the lowest barrier to build out because we want to build out as quickly as possible. But there are two options to on how we should start the build out of the Lakewood Trail. The reason we're starting it now is because we have $1.5 million that may come down from the t sploss which we vote on in May. And we wanted to make sure that if that is granted to our community, we want to get, get rolling fast uh, and, and start to build out for the Lakewood Trail. It's only 1.5 million, so we're going to break it up, probably break up our phases into smaller phases so we can start build out as quickly as possible. Uh, we do have a meeting at, with the PAL Foundation on March the 8th of District 1 office with Council Member Winston's office. Uh, one thing I also mentioned is High Point Estate and Joy Land is working on lighting for a long prior circle, uh, not prior circle, a Bowen circle uh, going towards Joy Land, towards Lankford Park. And uh, I think James Holmes is on the line, but he has reached out to Neely, who is over the lighting for Georgia Power and he has and Neely has sent out and forwarded the message over to Commissioner Rohan who is over Rowan who is over the Atlanta Department of Transportation and they look to finalize in the next few days. The next piece Transportation Commissioner Rowan. Yeah he's over ADOT yeah Atlanta Department of Transportation he's a commissioner. Um, for Madonna Bridge, they have, I haven't quite looked over there, but they said based on their report that they are creating a temporary sidewalk, should be complete with that by now, uh, as well as starting the, restarting the build out of the Madonna Bridge. And they look to have, if everything goes smoothly, they look to have traffic flow in July, 2022. Yay. Uh, we're gonna move forward to zoning. Committee. I think uh, Bob, are, oh, both Bob and Jacob is not going to be online. Bob is traveling and Jacob had a, a conflicting meeting. For zoning, uh, our next meeting is on Wednesday. So we meet on the fourth Wednesdays at 7 p.m. You can get with Jacob Mills or Bob Morris for more information. What we're going to be discussing in that meeting is CBAs. 
99 University has created an SAP and the MPUV chair has sent that over to me and she wants us to be part of the conversation with 99 University. They have an SAP that was submitted recently. And then lastly, we're gonna be talking about the Brownfield Stakeholder Advisory Committee. And what that means is that is the, um, they're looking at specifically at the Jonesboro Road corridor and looking at brownfield, like old, maybe land, like recycle plants, gold gas stations, and figuring out how can we redevelop the Jonesboro Road corridor. So this is a very important meeting because we have a lot of industrial use along our corridor that we want to make sure it's cleaned up. Is there any questions for the benefit of the body before we move on? Or you might want to parse some of those acronyms for folks that don't, don't always come into the room, like oh. CBA, et cetera. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so CBA stands for Community Benefits Agreements. One of the initiatives within the zoning committee is to make sure that we have uh, agreements between the directly affected community and the developer. And we're going to try to uh, get incentives to the community through these CBAs. Uh, Zachary, I see that you have your hands raised. You can call to the floor. Hey, sorry, I was just uh, wondering if the committee meetings, um, are those dates posted on the um, website? They are not, but we will get it on the website. Thank you. Um, yep. Thank you for that. Is there any other questions for the benefit of the body? Uh, Paul? Paul, you call Paul, the floor. You're, you're muted, Paul. Paul just Paul asked to unmute. Maybe Paul is right. asleep in this. <laughs> okay, now I got it. Um, hey, I like our zoning committee to find out where zoning reform is. Um, as you know, we had we did a lot of work to get the MQ position that we wish to support the single family core. And we had many zoning issues and in the CDP, which did not want to do that, but they were defeated last year. But basically, except for Tim Keene, everybody that proposed it last, last year from the planning department is still here. And, and, and the zoning reform issue is still on the table, which will basically try to do everything that that was voted down last year. So um, from our planner and the zoning committee to find out where zoning reform is and should not let planning come and, and tell us what we ought to be thinking. Because this is what I feel they they will do. So I was wondering if we could put that on the agenda and to have a community response to whatever uh, planning ha presents to us uh, when they come and present zoning reform to us. Okay. Y yes, and we can add that to the agenda. Yeah, if our planner is on the line here, do you know where zoning reform is? Yes, I'm aware. I work in the Office of Zoning and Development. So um, where are they? Yes. They're supposed so, to have meetings with people. So it's so, in its uh, early phase because nothing has kick-started it. The only thing that has kick-started is the small zoning one-on-one, -on -one, zoning 102, and then the ideas lab about zoning reform. Those are the three things that have already occurred. Um, I can send over that information that is available to you. So if you want to participate in that, it's an active way to be involved with the zoning, um, not only participation, but also you should know that the zoning approach that we're taking now is not being used by consultants. It's actually in-housing and um, materializing what we take in from the MPUs to be proactive 
Um, so keep that in mind, but I can send you over that information or drop it in the chat portal because that's what's available right now. And I can also connect you with the proactive um, regulatory team who oversees the project itself. And then second, oh. secondly, Paul, we do have, me and you probably, is gonna have a meeting with Deputy Commissioner of Zoning. Um, she's doing one-on-ones with all the MPUs. So they asked for me to speak with her and one other representative. And Paul, I'll probably bring you to the, the table on that one since you're the uh, vice chair. I, mean, I definitely want to do that because although Tim Keene left, the Atlanta uh, design housing document has remained unchanged. So that was the one that says we're going to grow to 1.2 million in 2050 and that zoning is racist. I do not want that document to continue in its current form. Okay, so yeah, we'll we'll discuss offline and um and definitely address those issues. Appreciate that, Paul. All right, for the second time, we're gonna go ahead and move forward to matters of of uh, voting. Matters of voting. Uh, do we have? 1634 Lakewood Avenue, is, is Terry Bailey on the line? Um, Zachary, did they speak at the Lakewood community? Uh, Terry spoke uh, maybe uh, two months ago um, at the Lakewood community meeting. Um, and that was just the message he shared with the MPU about um, the, the, their effort to attempt to get a security detail going on um, Lakewood and Jonesboro. Um, we haven't heard an update since then. Okay. I'd like to solicit a motion to defer. So moved. I'll second it. That's Nicole. Uh, uh, motion by Gloria Hawkins Wynn, mm -hmm. seconded by Nicole Westweiser. Um, mm -hmm. Is there any items for discussion with, with this? It's been on the agenda for months. Yeah, briefly, uh, Troy. I think what, what's most compelling for these entities is whether or whether the case is scheduled on a hearing calendar. And so far, it by consent, essentially, it has not been scheduled. So that is that's what gives them the, the opportunity to hold it in deferral until, I mean, they can do whatever they need to do, but it's not on a calendar. That's what makes it more uh, preeminent. Correct. Oh, yeah. 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 Since it was voluntary deferral, then it's, it, it hasn't been put on the calendar yet. That's right. But yeah, thank you for that. Um, is there any other discussion points? All right. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and close out discussion and put it for a vote. The motion was on the floor to defer by Gloria Hawkins and seconded by Nicole. Let's watch there. All those who are in favor of the deferral, please use the raise hand feature at this time. In order to be a voting member, you must have attended three meetings in the last 12 months and be a resident or a business constituent. And 18 order. All right, we're gonna stop it here. What do we have? 11. All right, 11, I'll go ahead and close this out and clearing feedback. Uh, all those who wish to not defer, uh, please use the raise hand feature at this time. All those who wish to not defer or reject the motion. One, zero. All right, zero. All those who wish to abstain, please use the raise hand feature at this time. All right, we have one. Motion carries 1101. All right, moving forward in agenda for the GoPuff package store. 
is the applicant on the line or a representative? Yep, I see Elizabeth Darrington. Um, you can go ahead and speak for this. Hi, could you also recognize our outside counsel, Mike Sard? He should be on the line as well, please. Yep, Mike, you call to the floor as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name is Mike Sard. I'm an attorney at Sard and Left Attorneys in Atlanta. I'm here with Liz uh, Darrington. Liz is the proposed agent for the alcohol license uh, for GoPuff. Uh, our clients uh, had its facility over on Blashfield for well more than a year. Uh, it delivers uh, food and uh, other items to, uh, to folks in the community. Uh, it's on a to-go basis. This is not a retail store where one walks up and, and purchases. It's all done by delivery. Uh, so what we're doing with this application is that we're adding beer and wine to those services. Uh, you're not gonna notice any changes uh, uh, physically to the way the, the business is run. Uh, you'll notice it when you're ordering products from GoPuff online. Uh, the uh, SACL, was uh, kind enough to support uh, a legislative variance last year that uh, created the circumstances for our client to qualify for this license. It wouldn't have otherwise met the distance requirements uh, to have this service. Um, and so uh, we appreciate that uh, their support uh, for that and uh, appreciate you all support for this application this evening. Happy to answer any questions that we uh, that uh, you might have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, I'd like Devon, Devon, are you on now or a representative for South Atlanta Civic League? All right, I did share with the, if you can see the screen here that the South Atlanta Civic League was in support of the LRB application. And uh, they met with the South Atlanta Civic League several months ago, and they mentioned this to them. And they mentioned that they are new to the area, but they also have been a good community partner and express uh, their intention to continue supporting Civic League. Uh, is there any questions for the applicant at this time? I see Monique Nunnally, you call to the floor. Hey, I'm um, just curious, how do they um, verify age? I know that I have students who use GoPuff. Um, and so I'm because it's such an accessible tool, like what is the process to make sure like a friend of a friend is not purchasing alcohol? Like where are the, the checks and balances there? Great question, Ms. Nunley. So uh, this, the, the delivery component of alcoholic beverages was uh, created by state law, uh, I guess, uh, uh, during COVID, so a year, year and a half ago. And so the, the regulations that, uh, that govern this uh, are all under state law. First of all, all of the delivery drivers have to pass a criminal background investigation uh, by GoPuff, which of course GoPuff does. Second, all of the drivers must take a state approved responsible alcohol sales and service uh, training class. So uh, each driver has had that class. Uh, each driver has a certificate from that class. Uh, thirdly, in order to place any order for alcoholic beverages, uh, there's got to be a profile set up. Uh, online with GoPuff. So anyone who's ordering an alcoholic beverage, uh, there's a profile for them that includes their, uh, their ID. So we know that the person who is ordering alcohol is of age. Lastly, at the time of delivery, it's a requirement that the person deliver, that the delivery person also uh, card and record the identification of the person to uh, who is receiving the alcoholic beverage. Uh, so that is done as well. So that's all the process under state law. It's what GoPuff does. Um, and so it's uh, from a carding point of view, that's done start to finish. The GoPuff drivers uh, are all trained uh, to check IDs. That's part of the training that comes from the state and that information is recorded. Um, if the person is uh, not of age, 
or appears to be intoxicated, then the driver uh, is instructed to return the alcoholic beverages back to GoPuff, GoPuff's facility at Blashfield. Thank you for sharing. I mean, as a teacher, that's still very disconcerting that it feels very simple for minors to have access and more convenience in a space where we already have a lot of access to alcohol. There's no reason why we need delivery in our community because we have 10 million ways for you to get drunk in our neighborhood. So I'm just a little concerned that we're making it more accessible, but I'm, I'm willing to you know concede here due to time, but that's another conversation for another day. Thank you so much for your time, Council. You're welcome. Uh, uh, Paul, did you have any, any questions? Yes, um, I had an experience where that area was zoned M was zoned R4A, and the Civic League tried to rezone it to MR4A, and all the people that lived there were against it. So the fact that you got a uh, positive vote for C C Civic League is not to me sufficient because all the people that live in that area don't ever go to Civic League meetings. And I've got numerous complaints from the same people that, that fought against their property being rezoned, that Stave Puff has excessive traffic co coming in and out of there at, at all hours of day and night. And, um, and excessive noise is, is going on at, at that facility. Did, did you actually canvass the people that actually live there or, or did you just go to the Civic League meeting? Uh, I don't know that I could speak completely to that. My understanding is that GoPuff, uh, prior to, well, let's say it this way, that, that GoPuff uh, did have community engagement uh, prior to the legislation even being adopted. Uh, the Obviously, the council member uh, introduced and uh, carried the legislation. Uh, you know, I, I, without being involved with the legislation, I couldn't tell you uh, all the engagement was done, what was done by them. But uh, I mean, obviously this had support and enough so it had the support of the city council to, uh, to approve this. Well, I don't believe enough so, engagement has been done. And um, I, I know people are complaining about this all the time in that area. And they would have never approved anything for that legislation. Uh, unfortunately, the Civic League is basically geared to people that, that live uh, west of Jones Bar Road and all the other areas around that is in the Civic League area uh, basically are basically alienated from that organization. So I really would like a deferral until we can actually get direct contact of Safe Huff with the people that actually live on Blashfield, uh, Miller, Reed, and uh, Helen, um, Harriet Street. Okay, thank you, Paul. Um, is there a representative from the Civic League? Uh, Chris, did you wanna to speak towards that before? Just as a since he mentioned that mentioned the Civic League. I mean, other than the fact that I disagree that there's not representation on that side of South Atlanta. South Atlanta Civic League does a great job of representing all residents of South Atlanta. Uh, and I disagree with Paul's statement at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, Gloria, did you have anything? Yes, uh, just a Hold quick on. question. Just a quick uh, counsel. Is this the only uh, go go puff or stay puff that uh, the client uh, owns? Are there other franchises? It's go puff. These are not franchises. These are all company owned uh, stores. Okay. And yes, we have other locations in the city of Atlanta that are doing this as well. And again, no, all have no, and have had no violations. They're all called. They're all called. They're all called, they're all called go puff. Yes, ma'am. And they, essentially, essentially, it is not a retail a la carte location, but it's a to-go 
allocate uh, location. Is that correct? It's a delivery. It's a delivery location. Delivery. So you so you yeah. wouldn't shop there in person. Yeah. You would shop online. You would order, and it would product would be well, delivered to your home or office. I do. I do. I do uh, um, uh, share sentiments oh. of Miss. Uh, yes, of Miss. Uh, no, Nunley. no, I'm just muting. Okay, I do share the sentiments of Miss Nunley. There is a heavy student population within a matter of blocks from Ron Clark Academy to the schools of Carver in South Atlanta, and I would agree with her. What what more controls do you all have on not someone ordering and being able to confirm that the, the kids that have just popped out of uh, the schools are, I just leave it for food for thought because I think we will be looking and listening and sensing for that. So just, just consider that Mr. Um, Council. Yeah, uh, thank you, Ms. Hawkins. And, and you know, our, our, this isn't, uh, our, our client has many, many units all around the country. Um, and so we've had a lot of success uh, in responsible alcohol sales and service. Um, this is something that they are uh, very, very aware of. They do have many facilities near college campuses uh, and, co and college students are an important market to them. But also the coming, comes with that is the responsibility of not selling alcohol to underage people, which is why they train their staff so rigorously in, in Georgia in accordance with state requirements. Uh, and this is something they're very careful about. They want to keep their alcohol licenses. They want to keep their good reputation in the community, which they have. Um, and uh, you know, we're we're not about selling alcohol to underage people. There are uh, plenty of uh, plenty of of age people who uh, oh, I'm to get you sell alcohol to. Um, this is Paul McMurray. I, I have someone. Paul, Paul you have to use. I have someone online that wants to speak. Paul, Paul, use the raise hand feature, but we're gonna, you, but you will call you right after Chris because Chris is actually uses okay. raise hand feature for you. All right. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris, your call to the floor. Hi everyone. So this is Sam McCord. Um, so glad that you guys are discussing GoPuff because I absolutely love them. Um, but so my fan bias because I'm one of them. I'm one of the drivers, so I can definitely give you an in-depth idea of how it goes when someone is delivering to someone who has ordered alcohol. So um, absolutely, as it was stated, that um, you get the whole profile, the person, the address, and it states whether or not you have to go ahead and you're delivering something that requires their ID. How GoPuff started is they were actually delivering um, the nicotine puff. And so they were already in the business of carding for those that were 18 and above. So they have an extensive history of, of at least carding for that. <clears throat> so once you have the app, you have to, literally, there's no way around it. You have to scan their passport barcode or you have to scan their ID for their driver's license. So once that is done, the system then requires them to sign. There's no way around it. You have to go ahead as the driver, you are responsible in making sure that you assess that the ID is real. The second format as of that is the fact that the system then scans that ID to make sure that it's real and it's run through the database to make sure that that is a valid ID. So you have me as the driver making sure this is a real ID. You have the system requiring the scan to happen, which then says, yes, this ID is real. This is someone who is over the age of 21. They can order this product, which is for someone over the age of 21. And then you get their signature. And at that point, you can then say, yes, I've delivered this item. So when people have asked, well, have you delivered snacks to schools? So yes, definitely have delivered M&Ms and you're able to see as a driver what items you are transporting. So you go inside and you pick up an already packed bag, but in the app, it shows you exactly what you are ordering. So even if under some circumstance, the system didn't register that there's alcohol in your possession, you can already see as a driver what you're delivering and where you're going. So in the instances that I've delivered snacks, because I've gone to the high school for it, specifically here at Carver, specifically during the lunchtime, I've delivered cookies and M&Ms and things of that nature. So I've, I've even told Chris, I was like, go puff. I've gone everywhere from security guards to high schools, to campuses, to the work at home, mom. So when I, I always tell Chris, it was just a plethora of the different people that use even law offices. 
Um, so that's just some background in terms of how it goes when they're delivering alcohol. This company has grown um, exponentially. And so they bought the alcohol company, um, th that the distribution company. So it's under their umbrella. So it's not as though um, they're working with some other party. They've, they have the extensive knowledge. It is an experienced company that they bought that does the distribution of alcohol that has been established for several years. So, and we learn all of this as drivers for OPUF. And so, yes, um, there's one that's located at the Georgia Tech. There's one that's considered in um, East Atlanta. And then um, there's one that we're lucky to have here in South Atlanta. And then there's one in Lindenburg. And so they are looking to expand eventually, but we have set hours that we can get as drivers. And then they have open hours where you can choose if you want to go there and drive. And in terms of um, noise, Honestly, uh, amongst there with the other um, warehouses, it's pretty quiet. And I work um, at least 25 hours a week with GoPuff, specifically at least 9% of those hours being here at our South Atlanta warehouse. And then the other percentage being at the Georgia Tech warehouse, but I've been to each of them. So um, that's all I wanna give on that topic. In addition to that, I also think that they, I, I know for a fact that they have at least three South Atlanta residents that are working for GoPuff in general. So it is a job generator for our neighborhood. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Paul, we're gonna allow you, uh, allow you to speak and then we'll close it out. Okay, I have someone on the line. Please introduce yourself. I am Terry and I am a part of the neighborhood right around the corner from there on Harriet Street. And I have my other neighbor on the line, her name is Ari, and we do not want them to have a liquor license over here. We already got enough problems with these just traffic in and out through here. Those people have never came to us whatsoever to even introduce themselves to us, not one time since they have been here. I have called up to the uh, corporate office trying to get something done about all the traffic on 24 hours a day. They go in and out of here without no remorse flying in and out here with loud music. And each time I was told that the manager would reach out, the manager have never reached out. I had a young man that uh, lived over here that was working back there that walked away from the job because of uh, racial tension with the manager. So he, the manager is not doing anything back there. So at the end of the day, we do not want them to have a liquor license back there. Because like I said, they have been back there a year and better. They have not reached out to us as far as a neighbor. And I've been living here right at 40 years. And everything that goes on the back, back there, whether the bridge is out or not, is nothing but nothing but a problem. We never knew that there was movement in there until they got in there. And so otherwise, they slid in there, and we didn't know it. I have spoken again with the corporate office on three to four different occasions and nothing has been done about this ongoing traffic that is getting worse. You can, uh, in the evening, you can look to anywhere from 50 to 75 trips in here from 5 o'clock in the evening. All of the, the streets are now cracking up from the 18 wheelers. Of course, they're not paying attention to the signs out there. They don't care. There has been no attention to this here. In front of my house is cracking up. In front of my neighborhood is cracking up. There's a water men bust that back there on the back on Blackfield because the truckers cannot even back up in that city back there to even get their uh, products in there. So no, we do not, because we are we deal with enough as it is. We are uh, with them coming in and out here. We have no peace in this neighborhood. And it is sad that no one has reached out to us whatsoever. Or voice your concern. Thank you. No. Okay. It's not good. Thank you. Uh, we have we uh, have got a one 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 and it's just not good at uh, all. All right. We do not support Thank that at all. Thank you. Uh, uh Gopal, did you have anything to say towards that before we uh follow? Liz, you want to add something? Um, I will put my um, email into 
the chat right now. And if those neighbors would like to reach out to me, they have my email and I will escalate We're it. Both on the phone. Oh, you're on the phone. Can somebody give them yeah, my email? We'll, we'll make sure that Paul gets it and um, forward it over to them. Okay, thank you. And who is this that they want us to have her email? Where is she located? I'm in Atlanta. Are you in the she, corporate she's office? Wanted... I'm sorry. There's... Is the corporate office in Atlanta? There, there is no corporate office in Atlanta. Um, corporate office is in Philadelphia. I live in Atlanta. Every time I spoke with the corporate office, it was out and they relayed a message and I got one phone call back from the beginning of time when y'all opened that business up back there. And I call up this three other occasions. I don't think that you all realize the fast uh, traffic that we've had, we got in this neighborhood due to go pop. We really don't want it here. It is just, it is very much disturbed our livelihood. And as I often say, how would you want, I don't care nothing about the bridge being closed up there. Why would they even lift your comment here? And that guy that let you all lease that building. I unfortunately told y'all a fabricated lie that we knew that you all were coming back there and it would be all right for the truck to come. Who does that? Who wants to be up all night long with traffic running back and forth in the neighborhood where we're not sleeping? I tell them it's just like a 7585 or 285 South and West, 7585 North and South all day and all night. And you can forget the weekend. And when you come in your house anytime after four o'clock, you forget it. And they start at 5 30, 6 o'clock in the morning, coming through with trucks. There is no rest for us in this yes. neighborhood. But one lady moved out with her kids over here. They, they, they get out, uh, Paul. They, go by, they keep on going. Okay. So all right. Okay. Yeah. Paul, Paul uh, could you get their yeah, get their information and then we're we'll, we're gonna reach out to them personally and and, and better understand. Um, but um, uh, like, so, but we have to we I'd have like to move to make forward. A we are, on we are twenty five minutes. Okay. We have my, a, we my have a motion, motion is to defer this until a meeting is held with um, Miss De Darrington physically face-to-face -face with the residents of that area off of Blashfield. Okay, so um, with LRB, in order to defer, we'll have to do a, vo a voluntary deferral and ask the applicant to do a voluntary deferral. What that means um, is you all as an applicant will have to say, hey, we voluntarily deferred in, in order to address this issue. Uh, if we were to defer and there is a, a meeting set that is on the LRB license due to municipal code, we won't be able to, um, if you all choose not to defer, voluntary defer, we will have to go ahead and, and move forward with a vote, unfortunately. So uh, I would like to get you all's opinion on, do you want to voluntary defer or go ahead and move forward with a vote? I will, we'll defer. All right, thank you. All right, so um, so they move towards the. Mr. Chair, can we can we get the contact information for the folks who uh, uh, for the neighbors there? Can y'all facilitate uh, that for us, please? Uh, oh we'll, yes, Paul. Could you could you add yeah. their information into the chat of the neighbors? Uh, well, why doesn't I already have the so, email from uh, Miss. Dar Darrington, if Mr. Sard could put his information in there, I will send it to you. Okay. Yeah, and I'll. Yeah, and in, in reverse, and uh, yep, and also in reverse, Paul, you um, uh, add me to that too, Paul. Add me to that. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, that right. being said, we're gonna go ahead and um, uh, I guess I guess we can go ahead and vote on the deferral. All those who are in favor, even though it's voluntary, all yeah, those right. who are in favor say yeah, yes, sir. We need, we need oh, a second. Of, I do order. need a second. Yeah, we so need a I, second. I second. All right, seconded by Heather. Thank you. Uh, is Briefly, is there any discussion? I know there's typically a discussion after seconding. it. All right, with that yeah, being one, said, we're going to close caveat, the discussion out. Caveat, Mr. Chair, I believe some of those numbers may be showing up in our participants list. So we asked for uh, 
Paul to take a look to confirm whether or not those are the participants' numbers, the ones that are online on phone. Oh, yeah. no, no. Paul, could you verify that? I mean, okay. Okay. I mean, I've, so got, gonna, I've, go, I've got, I've got, I'm going to close it. Oh, I'm going to go okay. ahead and close. I need to go ahead and put a vote. We got to move forward. Uh -huh. it's, we 30 minutes in. Um, so all those who are in favor of deferral, please use the raise hand feature at this time. Going on. Well, we're voting on a deferral. All right. Um, I see eleven. Yes. I'm gonna go ahead and close close that out. All those who wish to uh, reject the motion for deferral, please use the raise hand feature at this time. None. Oops. One right, and we up. We have please. one. One in opposition. Uh, Chris, does that include Samantha as well? It does. Two. Okay, so two. Opposition. Yep. In opposition. Um, lowering hands now. All those who wish to abstain, use the raise hand feature at this time. No abstainers. All right. Motion carries for deferral. Uh, we will. Make note of that, Krishana is going to make note that it's a voluntary deferral, and then they will move your LRB date to after our next meeting. You um, please rate uh, restate the voting record that we had for approval of deferral. The numbers, please. Uh, 11 for two against zero abs abstain. Okay, thank you. I have that confirmed. All right, thank you. We will look forward to seeing you all at the next meeting. Thank you. All right, we're going to, thank you. Cheers. Uh, we're going to go ahead. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move forward towards old business. Uh, there is nothing that we tabled. So we're going to move forward to new business. And this is the letter of support, the Community Garden Langford Park. Uh, Ken, did you want to brief, uh, briefly speak towards it? Yes, <clears throat> good evening, everyone. <clears throat> it's Ken Akbar, Jarland Civic League. Um, actually, we uh, uh, were able to build uh, several raised beds in the community about three years ago uh, because those of us that reside in this area now do realize that this is, uh, this is a food desert, this area is now. And so we wanted to demonstrate to the community that we could grow and sustain ourselves in our own community. And we built, uh, we actually had only three raised beds and we grew so much produce that we did, uh, we were able to bless much of the community with fresh produce uh, for the past couple of years. And it was always uh, a part of our vision with our civic league that uh, this would graduate into us having a community garden. Uh, and uh, so we actually had our, we met with uh, Dr. Rebecca Robinson, uh, myself and the vice president of Drawland Civic League, Jarrett Billings met with Dr. Rebecca Robinson. Uh, I guess that was about three weeks ago or so. And she toured uh, the park with us, not just the area on the green space where we are planning to build our community garden. And then right behind that, I had the design review and planning a Zoom meeting with the park officials, uh, the, the, the managers with the parks department uh, regarding uh, the layout and uh, uh, the things that we uh, envision regarding the garden. So uh, we also have a, a great relationship with our partners there at the Louise Watley Southeast Atlanta Library. Uh, we've actually been uh, collaborating with them for some time to uh, be involved with uh, creating some specific programs for uh, our residents here uh, in the community. And one of those is uh, that we will be uh, having training classes and educational classes about gardening right across from uh, Arthur Langford Junior Park uh, at the library. Awesome. 
Thank you for that, Ken. Uh, as mentioned by Ken, they have received a positive recommendation from the Parks and Rec Committee of MPUI, as well as a positive recommendation from the executive team of MPUI. Uh, I'd like to solicit a motion. Move that we support um, Mr. Akbar and the Joyland community in its uh, pursuit of the community garden. Second, Zach Murray. Moved by Gloria, seconded by Zachary. Uh, is there any items for discussion? With that being said, we're going to go ahead and move forward to a vote. All those in favor, please use the raise hand feature at this time. In order to be a voting member, you must have attended three out of the last 12 calendar months. Showing All right, 10, 10, 10, 10, in favor. 10 in favor. Got it. Clear now. 10 in favor. Um, so, all those who wish to uh, be not in favor or reject the motion, please use the raise hand feature at this time. None in opposition. Uh, all those who wish to Abstain, please use the raise hand feature at this time. No abstainers. Motion carries 10 0 0. So, Ken, I will be writing a letter of support and send that over to you. Thanks so much. I appreciate all the support. Yeah, appreciate you too. Uh, moving forward to the Actually, I'm going to do the community impact grant last, uh, Nicole. Um, letter of support for Key Prior Road University Beautiful. I don't know. James Holmes is actually on the line. Uh, James, are you, did you want to speak briefly towards this? <laughs> hey, Troy, I am here. Hey, good evening, everyone. So for those of you who may not know, uh, the neighborhoods of Joyland, Villages of Carver, as well as High Point, we've uh, really built a strong coalition to uh, really address some of the issues that impact uh, our immediate neighborhoods. Um, most recently, we've engaged in conversations around trash buildup uh, in the corridor of Prior Road and University. Um, to date, we've sent about 50 letters um, to businesses, real estate owners, as well as uh, vacant lot owners uh, within that corridor to basically or simply just ask if they would partner with us to help keep our community um, beautiful. You know, that, that, that corridor is an, is an important gateway um, in, into our neighborhoods, particularly within NPUY. So essentially we're here to basically garner support for the NPU uh, for this effort. All right. Uh, that has received a positive recommendation from the executive committee. Uh, I'd like to get a motion. Yes, sir. Motion to support the Prior Road University Avenue keep keep uh, University Avenue beautiful uh, initiative. Uh, can second. I get a second? Second. Second, my leader. All right. With that being said, is there any items for discussion? All right, closing out discussion. Oh, uh, all those in favor, please use the raise hand feature at this time. Eleven in favor, if you include me, I couldn't raise my hand. Sorry. Eleven in favor, if you include my 11th vote. Eleven in favor? Yes. Clear and feedback now. All those who wish to reject this motion, please use the raise hand feature at this time. All those who are in opposition, please use the raise hand feature at this time. None in opposition. All right. Uh, all those who wish to abstain, please use the raise hand feature at this time. No abstainers. All right. 
motion carries. So James, we will be joining the cause of sending out letters as well, and also sending a letter of support. Thank you so much, Troy. Thank you. Um, moving forward towards uh, ratification of APAP alternate. Uh, Heather Graybill has been nominated by myself uh, and has been supported by the executive team to become the APAP alternate which means that she will, in the case where the delegate cannot vote, it will default to her. And in the case where the delegate who's, who's Gloria Hawkins wins uh, or her cannot vote, it will default to me as a voting member. And she, that's her responsibility essentially to act as a replacement for the delegate. Also, I hate to add this in here as a secondary thing, but it's not on the agenda. Um, I, I did also add Nicole uh, Westwasser as a special project ad hoc committee chairperson. Um, so I would like to add that as well as a, I guess a slate vote with her as the chairperson. And the responsibility is to manage the community impact grant and any other special projects. So with that being said, I'd like to solicit a motion. Or if you want, want anybody to briefly speak, please say that in the discussion. <laughs> but I'd like to solicit a motion. Yes, sir. Move that we uh, support it, uh, your nominee of Heather Graybill as the alternate at the Atlanta Planning and Advisory Board. And concurrently that we support the uh, appointment of uh, Nicole, Nicole, pronounce your last name for me, Weiss. Weisswasser. 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 I should know that by now. Nicole Weisswasser is Special Projects Manager, Ad Hoc Projects Manager 2022. Uh, can I get a. Uh, I'll second if I can. No. Uh, a couple of answers. Can I get another second? <laughs> I'll second. Yeah. All right. Seconded by uh, Joe Joe. Joe. Yeah. All right, uh, I'd like to open the conversation for discussion. So Heather serves as our current secretary for MPYZ team. Nicole Weisswasser uh, serves as uh, on the Chosewood board as secretary for the Chosewood uh, neighborhood. All right, seeing no discussion points, we will go ahead and put the motion to a vote. All those who are in favor of the nomination, please use the raise hand feature at this. Please uh, share add me as the 10th. I'm unable to raise my hand at this point. I'm the 11th. All right, we have it. We have 11. 11 in favor. Yes. All those who wish to oppose, please use the raise hand feature at this time. All those who wish to abstain, please use the raise hand feature at this time. Motion carries. Elect, oh, sorry. We got one. Uh, motion carries. 1101. 1101. All right, um, moving forward towards the uh, community impact grant. Oh, Nicole, did you want to briefly speak on this? Yeah, so I'm going to share my screen and just do a quick presentation if you don't mind. Yep, it's all yours. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. Okay, um, so thank you for um, nominating me and um, motioning me in. 
Um, so we're going to discuss the 2022 Community Impact Grant application. Um, the Community Impact Grant is a, it's a program that's funded by the Department of City Planning to assist MPUs in their efforts to improve their neighborhoods and the city as a whole. Uh, this year, the CIG will be granted towards impactful opportunities versus granting multiple smaller grants unifying the NPUs. Um, they're also awarding NPUs uh, $6,500, which traditionally the CIG awards only $5,000. However, if your NPU leadership completed designated training in 2022, an additional $1,500 is awarded, which your leadership team has. Um, additionally, grant funds are not guaranteed to any applicant um, awards. Um, but awards will be determined by a panel selected by the Department of City Planning. Um, in previous years, our MPU has made great progress and improvements, which aligned us with the mission and purpose of the Department of City Planning. The MPU are awarded the grants for the purpose of neighborhood enhancement and beautification, neighborhood leadership and capacity building, neighborhood awareness and community engagement, and neighborhood development assistance. Our MPU focus this year is the neighborhood awareness and community engagement. The goal is to unify the whole MPUY as one community and really build on our member engagement. And you do that by creating awareness. So we came up with five different ideas. Um, so we're gonna just kind of run through them really quick. Uh, the main idea that, or the first idea that we had was to do, it's called Together 1000, and that's going to be our web connectivity to increase awareness. The problem that the MPUs have is, is that we only have a 2% engagement rate in the city of Atlanta, and even worse, our MPUY is only an engagement rate of less than 1%. So the goal is to get 1,000 people to attend three community meetings within two years. And how do you do that? It's to increase web presence of communities and interconnected into an engagement platform to measure our meeting engagement. And you do that by improving existing websites and create new platforms com for community outreach. Um, our Together 1000 would roughly give $1,000 per community website to be designed or revamped into a util utilized tool of the community. So far, we have four communities that are seeking funds to improve their web presence within additional funds for communities that have not reached out yet. Our second is to do a Southeast MPU Unity Day. Um, and this is to improve communication between neighborhood leadership. So the problem that we have is that there's no way for leaders to meet each other and to collaborate on ideas in the community. Thus, the MPUY is seeking gaps in communication between communities and cross collaboration in communities and city officials. There's also a huge lack of the current neighborhood um, watch engagement. So our solution is to create an annual event for the community leadership, city leaders and school leaders in the Southeast quadrant called the Southeast um, Atlanta Unity Day or a Southeast MPU Unity Day. In the meeting, the leaders will make intros to other leaders and discuss our issues and our ideas and be able to work together and make that networking. Um, this will also allow us to revitalize our neighborhood watch. Um, this program does involve participation for um, in major group efforts from all four MPUs in the Southeast Quadrant. So it's MPUW, MPUX, MPUY, and MPUZ. Um, with this one, um, our cost is, it's going to be broken up between all of ours, but what we would like to participate is being able to um, put it in towards event space, rentals or foods and snacks, in event flyers, invitations, DJ sound. Um, and with that, there's going to be additional expenses whenever you do an event, um, as well as maybe having some room to do some welcome packets, which would allow us to invite um, members that may, may not be um, already included. So our welcome packets are another option that we have. Now, like I said, this can be actually piggybacked um, onto other sections where we may have additional funds um, because it doesn't involve as much expenditure. So our thing with this is to make welcome packets for new MPU residents. And this is a community outreach for all of our new members. So the problem again is that engagement and because it's so much lower in our community than in the city, we really wanna work on um, engagement throughout our MPU. So the solution would be to increase the engagement rate. We plan to send targeted pack welcome packets to all of our neighbors, especially new neighbors. Um, each welcome packet will contain a brochure that contains information about MPU meetings, neighborhood meetings, and city information such as ATL 311 and about our council member district info. Um, this will also include neighborhood specific inserts as each neighborhood has their own um, organization as well. 
Um, like I said, this doesn't have as big of an impact when it comes to financing um, because it's just a uh, packets design, print, and then um, actually get them sent out. Our fourth idea is to custom make custom designed COVID masks for seniors and for our other residents. So it's COVID protection to improve community interactions. Um, COVID is still high and with new variants coming out, it does cause concern for people. Um, furthermore, MPUY needs to show unity more than ever. So our solution is to, um, the wish is to promote safety and unity by printing custom design COVID masks. Seniors will get priority on our masks and then be able to spread those out to other residents um, as we have uh, a need for them. Um, and it creates an opportunity to reach out to members throughout the MPU that we would not normally um, be able to reach out to. Um, our cost for that, again, design, print, um, and sending them out with filters. Lastly, we have our mural of unity, and this is to use art as beautifying and to unify the community as a whole. Um, we have a need to beautify the community while showing a sense of unity. And by producing a mural, a street mural or wall mural um, in a high traffic area that um, actually brings people to our community as well. These are a couple of examples. On the left-hand side, you have Midtown, you have, then you have uh, West End, and on the top right, that's actually Cabbage Town. Now we have this one as um, just one set price for it. However, um, murals, as we know, every artist costs different. Um, and so they're, depending on where our location would be, um, the cost on this could be more than the 6,500 or under 6,500. And um, that would be it. So we just have uh, five items to vote on. Um, and it's going to be reach, you know, it's, this is a community vote, so everybody has an input on this, um, but we did list them in order of what our leadership does feel is gonna be best suited. Uh, Gloria, did you wanna piggyback on this at all? No, you did a very comprehensive job. Thanks so much. Maybe we could, uh, I try, think you were gonna uh, display the flyer, the trifold. I don't know if everybody saw it, but and just kind of drop it in the chat. It's been floating for a minute, but the trifold uh, depicts much of what you described. It was just perfect. Thank you, Heather. thank you. Um, Nicole, I'm calling you Heather. Thank you, Nicole. You're welcome. All right. Um, so, I, we will have, so it's required by the Community Impact Grant is to put the ideas or an idea before the body and get a vote on it. Um, so I would like to solicit the motion or any discussion items before we Or I'd like to solicit a motion and then open for discussion. Heather. What, Heather, what was the motion? To vote on the ideas. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Uh, uh, Lear, I see your hand raised. You call to the floor. Uh, yeah, I just had a quick question about the um, welcome packets. I kind of came in towards the end, but I see that it says new MPUY residents. Is there, um, I mean, I don't know. Well, I guess there are so many, but I wonder if there's like a way to reach out to more than just the new, maybe some that we're kind of lost. Like we saw them five or six years ago, but they haven't been back just to kind of get it out there to more than just new MPUY residents. I like that. Make note of that. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I would like to say that um, Together 1000 really does help do that as well um, by building that web presence. Um, hopefully that would allow uh, communities that don't have a web presence currently or have a social media or anything to be able to um, build MailChimp or any other form that they need uh, to start getting that information out to their residents. All right. Um, so I'd like to solicit a motion. So the, these, as Nicole mentioned, these are in the priorities in which was recommended. Um, let us know if there's one thing that you feel is higher priority, but we do need to get it for a vote today because our deadline is March the 4th and it's required to vote on it before we submit it um, by March 4th. Would it make voting easier if everybody put the number that they wanna vote for into the chat? versus going through each one and doing um, yeses and nos. I like that. Can't we just vote on it all together if we like all of it or no? 
unfortunately we have to select one um, and then we build an Just application and send that in. Gotcha. Okay. And, and Heather, I mean, uh, Heather, um, Nicole, it's probably good to reiterate that this order of ranking was ranked by the executive team. I know my neighborhood really wants to develop more of a web presence. So that's that was my vote with, was for web presence. And I think the two, three, and four almost can be combined in one um, in one uh, funding packet, uh, but it we could see close to at least a 6,000 plus for the uh, web presence, which might, Correct. yeah. So I think that was a, so if I, can I motion or is there someone already put a motion? Uh, on? Uh, you can motion because um, uh, it never got second it. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, motion. Go ahead, motion. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, motion. Go ahead, motion. Um, I move that the uh, body accepts the Together 1000, uh, which has been the recommendation of the executive committee as the CIG funding for 2022. Uh, that we, that that be the choice for submission by March 4th, which is just next week for the 2022. Uh, grant uh, and if uh, necessary, I think uh, Nicole can point us back to the figures, which this grant will this will pretty much consume all sixty five hundred, maybe some less, and then we could devote that towards uh, the, some of the remaining projects. Yeah, so let me break this down for you real quick before we get a second. Um, we do have Chosewood Park, which is my neighborhood that has um, strongly expressed the need for this um, for over a year now. Lakewood Heights, uh, Joyland. NPUY's leadership um, landing page. And then we have in there for other communities at 2,500. So other communities can reach out and say that they need to have um, some funds that would do the same for them. I have a question. All right, can I get a, uh, can I get a second? Then we're gonna open up. A session. second, Rebecca Robinson. Just a right, point of clarity, All right, the uh, motion died. According to um, parliamentary procedure, the motion died. We need to remotion. So if okay, we could hold yeah. all discussion, until the part for the discussion, that'd be appreciated. Thank you. Go ahead and remotion on Gloria. She's correct. Since mm -hmm. we had discussion in between. Uh, so go ahead and remotion in there. Okay, there was no uh, second. On, okay, uh, it was pretty lengthy. That um, that the body moves to adopt the recommendation of the executive team that we allocate the first of our five in ranking, which is the web together one thousand to. Uh, give greater web presence for the community in the NPUI setting. Second, Zach. Uh, can I get a second? Second, Rebecca Robinson. Uh, 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 seconded by Rebecca Robinson. Thought I heard Zach in there. Uh, we're gonna open up for discussion. Zach, go ahead with your question. Thanks. Um, I was just wondering, you know, there are a lot of folks who aren't web connected. I, I really support this Together 1000 because we need a website in Lakewood Heights desperately, but um, I know that there, the print for residents was about 1350. And um, it seems like that's available in this budget, either by perhaps excluding the NPUY website for this year, or uh, by taking some from the fund that's available for other communities. But it does seem that print is equally important for engagement um, for our seniors, for folks who don't happen to have web connection. Um, so I just wanted to ask around that and, you know, just from a perspective. Um, of our folks who aren't web connected, how we can ensure that they are part of this um, platform as well. Most certainly. So like I said, there are um, some communities that have strongly expressed for this and we did leave um, the $2,500 that is additional for other communities. Um, if we do feel that, or if other communities reach out and say that they would need the funds for print um, together 1000, while it is focused on web connectivity, it's focused on connecting our neighborhoods to, in communication. Troy, it would be helpful too for those who have not yes. seen the trifold to kind of see how that is acting to undergird those who might not be web connected. Um, and and it, it's, in a, it's in a state of, um, of evolution, meaning that it's specific to each neighborhood, uh, as, as you'll see, but it, it, it's, it completely is available to be modified and customized to each neighborhood. Um, No, okay, not. I will share that. Yeah, I gotta look for. It. I gotta. I'm gonna share it with the uh, in the chat shortly. You wanna share? I've got it. I'll share it. All right, thank you. Yep. Um, so with that being said, I, I like that idea what Zachary just mentioned, where we'll take some of the additional some of the funds and move it 
towards print since we already have somebody working on the designs for the brochure, including the ones that uh, Gloria is sharing right now. Um, so we could take some of the funds and move it toward a, a print. Mm -hmm. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and close out discussion and go ahead and move forward towards a vote. We only have a few more minutes left in the meeting. All those in favor, please use the raise hand feature at this time. Together 1000. Vote if you can unshare the... Nine in favor. All right, nine in favor. I'm gonna go no, ahead and close out here. Tenth for me. I'm unable to. Oh, ten okay, for ten me. for you. Yes. Okay, please. ten. Go ahead and clear out now. Those who wish to um, oppose, please use the raise hand feature at this time. None All in right. Opposition. None in opposition. All right. None. Those who wish to abstain, please use the raise hand feature at this time. We have two. Two abstainers. So, so we have motion carries 10 02. 10 02. I will add my email in the chat if you um, would like to reach out to make sure that your community is involved and. Um, is either receiving funds or that we are sending you what we need um, to do the flyers or anything like that, please reach out to me and um, we have full transparency here. So we'll send everything over to you. Yeah. Oh, one thing to know, I see uh, Ms. Nunley put in, put in the chat. We did deliver t-shirts this weekend. We, 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 we still got a couple more to deliver, but we, delivered, we did deliver the t-shirts uh, last weekend. So if you still want a t-shirt, if you still want a t-shirt, reach out to uh, Ms. Nunley, Monique Nunley. How about the yard sign? Uh, the yard video? sign was delivered with the t-shirts. That's correct. I've seen a few. So we're, we're, we still have about 10 more to deliver. So if you haven't received it just yet, then we still have a couple more to deliver to uh, different residents. Uh, moving forward, moving forward. Uh, announcements. So the presentation was uh, was rescheduled. So the Fulton County government presentation, he couldn't make it. He was uh, he was out, so he rescheduled it for next next week or next month. Uh, is there any announcements? To please keep it at one minute. Is there any announcements? Um, just to speak on behalf of Ms. Nunley, I know the baby screaming in the background, but they do have, they're going to be going out to Forest Cove tomorrow mm. Mm. Um, and doing a, a health fair at Forest Cove tomorrow. So if you want to support, they're going to be down there uh, around one o'clock. So it's from one to three, February 22nd. Yeah, thank uh, you so much. Thank. I, I mean, I, it's bedtime, but I just wanted to say thank yeah. you. Um, Forest Cove is not in our MPU, but their students feed into our cluster schools. And oh. so right now it's just very precarious. Oh. So we are trying to help with a health fair, working with partners like Emory, Fulton County Board of Health, CORE, yeah. um, and some other partners. So it's going to be a good time if it doesn't rain. Um, and we're also doing a storytelling project with them, yeah. um, me and my students, um, um, and a few I Carver students to when capture their that, stories just in case um, they don't return that. after their relocation. Uh, we'll have um, their I stories. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And baby sound just like you too. Um, uh, Denise. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Denise Fisher. I'm the vice president of the board of St. Vincent de Paul, Georgia. And um, I'm really just here to listen and to learn for the next few months. But 
Um, if any of you would like to talk to us about our property at 1700 uh, Lakewood Avenue, uh, we're trying to discern really the best and highest use for this property that would really benefit the neighborhood. Um, this property was actually gifted to us years ago, and we hold that as a trust um, to try and put it to the best use of the community. And so we're looking for input. We're at an inflection point because the building needs a significant amount of work to continue on. Um, we're trying to decide if we should offer services there, services some other site, possibly um, putting in housing there, or we're, we're, we're wide open and have no real preconceived notions about what should occur. Um, so um, my email is in the chat and I would love to hear from you. Um, I'm also available to meet any of you down there on the property and walk it with you and uh, get your ideas on what you think uh, should happen there. So thank you. Thank you and thank you for attending. Uh, Zachary? Yeah, I was just wondering if Denise could um, drop your email in the chat once again, please. Thanks. And Zachary, he's the the chairperson over the Lakewood Heights community that's, that property sits in. Is there any other announcements? All right, uh, passing over to you, Krishana. Perfect, good evening everyone and Black, happy Black History Month. Um, I'm joining you guys here tonight. So with the planner's report, um, may I have sharing screen privileges? I think you may have it since you're a co-host, I think. Oh, try now. Okay, I believe I do. Oh, okay, let me try again. How about now? Yeah. Do we have a winner? Right. Okay, perfect. So thank you guys so much for um, being here this evening. As you guys know, I'm your MPU planner for this year and maybe many years to come. Um, I have highlighted in the chat portal the MPU planners report. I sent an attachment that also includes all the hyperlinks you need for the information for this evening. Um, I'll be brief. Even though this is a script, I try not to be robotic, so I'm going to be myself. Um, the first item on the list is that um, we had on February 15th, which is already passed at 6 p.m., the MPU University hosted Zoning Fundamentals, which you know is an essential piece, uh, piece of the zoning reform that is rolling out. So if you guys have not participated or started learning about how zoning development works, I highly recommend encouraging this. It teaches you about how to be legally responsible and responsive to your community needs, and it's something that's very form-fitting in the time that we're living in. Um, so if you haven't had that, I have at, if you haven't watched that or you need to participate in it. The MPU University recorded the um, course, so you can go back and watch it any time, or you could just listen to it on your way to work or while you're doing your morning exercise so you can learn about the zoning fundamentals and the history of how zoning has, um, how, how it works in the city of Atlanta. Um, do we have any questions about item number one? Okay, I'm not seeing any. Chairperson, I'm going to um, go on to item number two. Um, so item number two is about capital improvement elements updates. There is a link um, in the chat portal that takes you directly to the site about how capital improvement will roll out. This has a lot of details about how funding has worked in the history, what kind of funding and what kind of grants the city is expecting, um, specifically in the transportation uh, portion of it. Um, so this is something you guys should definitely, I encourage you guys to look, go look at that, review the dashboard. Um, there's some flyers and some fact sheets about how capital and improvement works and the element of it in the city of Atlanta with our new administration. Um, and then there's additionally um, how you're going to be, whether or not a project will be eligible for the impact fee on these funded projects. So I would encourage you guys 
guys to go look at that once again. Um, and then feel free to reach out to our office if you guys have any questions about the capital improvement or you, if you guys have any questions in regards to any of the legislations or the numbers that might be rolling out from that, um, feel free to do that. Are there any questions on item number two? Okay, I am seeing none. Okay, perfect, thank you. So I'm gonna uh, go to the last item. Nominations are still open for the 2020 Design Awards. The Design Awards are um, important opportunity for you guys to recognize the impact of the work you guys doing been doing in your neighborhood, whether it's creative placement, some urban design, tree canopy that you might be adding to the street. You might be able to nominate a project, a place, or a person that is making Atlanta a little bit better. Um, the, uh, this closes on February 28th at 4 p.m. Um, and I put uh, the direct person's contact information. So if you guys have any questions about how to submit or if you're um, struggling with the application process, I put their contact there so you can reach out to them via email or telephone, whichever your preference is. Um, and that pretty much concludes my planner's report tonight. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any questions before we... Uh, for the benefit of the body, for the plans report, before we move forward. All right, seeing none, we will, that is the end of the MPUY agenda. Um, oh, Nicole? Um, the link that was added was only for the MPU University. Can you add the one for the capital improvement, please? Yes, no problem. Thank you. All right, so I would like to, like to solicit a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second, second. Moved by Glory. All those who are in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, <laughs> aye. <laughs> all right, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and close out the recording.